Hey there everyone, my name is Mrs. Bailey and I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about my YouTube channel here. It's an educational YouTube channel, but it's a little bit different than some of the other ones that you may find on YouTube. I apologize in advance if I forget half of the stuff that I want to say, but it feels like this is my 75th take with the garbage trucks coming by, Metronet putting in stuff, the phone ringing, which I've now put on silence. So I preface this by asking you to forgive me if I forget stuff. A little bit about me. I'm a mom of two boys. I've taught pre-K and second grade. I've retired from teaching in 2020, and since that time, I've been a private tutor through grades six. My goal for these videos is to create teaching moments, not to have full-fledged lessons. I don't think that's possible with what I'm trying to do. What I do is I read stories. And in those stories, I try to insert little teaching moments. They can be ELA moments, English language arts, such as capitalization and punctuation. I mention that in just about every book because regardless of the child's age, they always seem to forget it. I also will insert moments like commas in a series, contractions, inferencing, cause-effect cause -effect relationships, just anything that I can come up with. For the younger children, I may talk about rhyming words, uh, counting, just anything. The books, in most cases, can be listened to by younger children and older children. It's okay. If, the younger, if I'm teaching something, say, uh, inferencing to older children, it's just a moment. It's not going to take away from the book for the younger children. Plus, they'll be exposed to it. If I'm doing something like counting in the same book, the, it's only a moment. So the older children are not going to be turned off by me counting to 10. It's just really quick. Um, it's to review skills already learned and preview skills to come. That's just what I was talking about. I'm hoping to create a better reader for the emergent readers. They're getting exposed to words that they've not seen before. And I try to read a tad bit slower in many of the books so they can follow along. Um, for the readers who are already kind of a past the emergent reader stage, they're learning fluency. I just want to keep their minds stimulated. You can use these videos any way you want to. I have a corresponding TPT channel, that's Teachers Pay Teacher, where I offer worksheets that correlate exactly to what I teach in the videos. You can check for understanding. Teachers can check for understanding or parents um, or assess. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to use those worksheets. You can just watch the videos and know that your child is learning. If you want to check out the worksheets, I have the link on my channel and at the top and there's a freebie there, and it, there's a freebie for, I think, the Frog Life Cycle. TPT is free to sign up for. So if all you ever get is that one Frog Life Cycle, that's fine. You can still watch all of the videos on um, YouTube, and your children can still learn that way. In class, I use them in liter literacy centers with Daily Five. Um, when I had my small group up with me, at least I could put this video in for other children Classrooms usually have devices and kids bring in their headphones and they could listen to it and I would know they were learning something. I didn't use these videos, but I can't use the ones that I made for copyright reasons because I can't read those books on YouTube. So I had to tweak things a little bit. I would also um, use them as rainy day activities. So when we couldn't go out and play on the playground and I had to scramble to find something to do, I would just use them whole group, stick a video in, the kids would watch it, and we would do the worksheets. There's also fun sheets, um, and I could assess them that way, or they could just have fun. When I did this, I may spread them out over a couple days or three days and insert them whenever I needed a extra few, whenever I had an extra few minutes and they could do the fun sheet on one day. They could do the worksheet on another day. The worksheets are differentiated. So if I have someone in class who's not yet quite reading, then I may give them one worksheet. If I have somebody else in class who is 
two grade levels above where they should be, I can give them a different worksheet. This means that parents at home who have a four and a seven year old and they're watching the same video, you're going to have worksheets for both of your children that's targeted towards their age range. I did that on purpose so you wouldn't have to give a seven-year-old something that a four-year-old should be doing. Also, with these worksheets, or no, I'm sorry, with these videos, you're just getting a teacher and a book. That's it. In the classroom, we don't have uh, animation. We don't have music. We just have a teacher and a book. And honestly, t kids sitting with a book and listening and focusing is a skill in itself. So that's why I didn't do all of the other stuff. It's not because I didn't know how. I didn't even try. Um, I wanted to make it as, as authentic as I possibly could, as close to a classroom experience as I could, as close to re reading a physical book as I could. So I hope you can find some value in this channel and the worksheets. And that's all, folks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day.